Unit 65. Going to the doctor's. Good morning, doctor. Hello, Mr. Williams. Take a seat. What seems to be the trouble? I'm not sure, doctor. But I am being feeling too well. I think I must have a touch of flu. Hmm. There's a lot of it going round at the moment. What are the symptoms? I'm feeling very tired, and I'm aching all over. I've been sneezing a lot, and feeling pretty feverish. Hot and cold all the time. Oh, and I've got a sore throat. Any vomiting? No, but I don't, I don't feel very hungry. I've got no appetite at all. Well, let's have a look at you. Open your mouth. Ah. Ah. Yes. Your throat's a bit inflamed. And the glands in your neck are swollen. Can you just unbutton your shirt? I want to listen to your chest. Breathe deeply. Right. I'll just take your temperature. Don't say anything for a minute. Just keep the thermometer under your tongue. I'll write out a prescription for you, but you know the best thing is just to go home, go to bed, and take plenty of fluids. Wayne fell off his bicycle. He's in the casualty department at the local hospital. Dr. Singh is examining him. Hello. Wayne, isn't it? You've had a bit of a fall. What were you doing? Going too fast? Yes, Doctor. I fell off going round a corner. You'd better get undressed then, and we'll take a look at you. Hmm. That's a nasty cut. I'll have to put a couple of stitches in that. I've got a cut here too, Doctor. It looks worse than it is. It's only a graze. The nurse will clean it up for you. It'll sting, but that's all. Now, does it hurt anywhere else? I've got a pain in my arm. It's very sore, and it feels stiff. Well, there's nothing broken, but you bruised your shoulder. It'll be sore for a few days. Now, did you bang your head at all? Yes, I did. I fell onto the bike. But it doesn't hurt now. Did you feel dizzy? No, not at all. Look up there. I'm just going to shine this light in your eye. No, that's fine. I'll just do the stitches and the nurse will put a dressing on it. Then you can go home. Mrs. Mallard has gone to see Dr. Gillespie, her family doctor. Good morning, doctor. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Mallard. What can I do for you this time? It's those pills, doctor. They don't seem to be doing me any good. Really? What's wrong? What isn't wrong with me, doctor? It's old age, I suppose. You're doing very well, Mrs. Mallard. You'll live to be a hundred. I've got this terrible cough, Doctor. And I've still got that rash on my hands and the backache. I can hardly walk sometimes. You don't think it's that legionnaire's disease, do you? I've been reading about it in the paper. No, oh, no. No chance of that. You're very fit for your age. Pardon? Anyway, I've nearly finished the old pills, Doctor. Can you give me a different colour next time? Unit 67. It's about time. Janet and Bruce live in London. Janet's younger sister, Pam, who lives in Edinburgh, is flying down to spend the weekend with them. Bruce, I think it's time to go and meet Pam at the airport. Oh, no, we've no need to hurry. There's plenty of time. It's only half past eight. There won't be much traffic at this time of night. You never know. And I think your watch must be slow. I make it 8.40. And you'll have to stop for petrol. I'd sooner we were too early than too late. It'll take her a while to get her luggage. Oh, come on, Bruce. It's time we were leaving. We can always have a coffee at the airport. <laughs> Anyway, I like watching people at the airport. I'd rather see the end of the football match. But never mind. we better go. Janet, hold on a minute. This is the phone. You haven't got time to answer it now. Ignore it. No, I'd better see who it is. It might be important. Bruce McGregor speaking. 
Oh, Pam. We were just on our way to fetch you. Oh, oh no. Hold on. I'll get Janet. Pam, where are you? I'm still in Edinburgh. The flight's been delayed. You caught us just in time. We were about to leave for the airport. I know. Bruce said so. I'm glad I phoned. You'd have had a long wait otherwise. When will you be leaving, do you think? Oh, not for an hour at least. Look, don't bother to come out to the airport. It's no trouble. We'll meet you. No, I'd rather you didn't. Honestly. Now, don't be silly, Pam. We'll collect you. No, Janet. I'd rather get a taxi. We'll be there, Pam. See you later. Oh, it's nearly 12.30. Well, we couldn't let her find her own way. Not at this time of night. She knows how to look after herself. That plane landed half an hour ago. It's about time she was here. It always takes ages to get your luggage. I know. It's about time they did something about it. Last time it took me longer than the flight. Oh, Bruce, there she is. About time, too. Pam, Pam, over here. I'll go and bring the car around. I won't be long. Well, Pam, what would you rather do tomorrow morning? Fly in or go shopping? This morning, you mean? I'd rather go shopping, but there's no need for you to get up and come with me. I'd rather you had a lie in. You must be tired out. I'm a bit tired. But I'll meet you for lunch. There's a new restaurant just off Kensington High Street... Do you think you'll be able to find your way there? Oh, Janet. It isn't as if this were my first visit to London. You can tell me where it is in the morning. Unit 71. The circus is coming. This is RW2, Watermouth's own independent radio station. In the studio with me this morning is Sally Farnham, the daughter of circus owner Bertie Farnham. Farnham's circus will be here in Watermouth for two weeks. That's right, isn't it, Sally? Yes, that's right. We open tomorrow for two weeks. Has the circus arrived yet, Sally? No, no, not yet. It's on the road somewhere between Sandpool and here. I suppose there's a lot to be done between now and the first show. Yes, that's right. I've already been here for three days... There were all the advance arrangements to be made. It's like preparing for a small invasion. What sort of things have you done? Oh, there are so many things to be done, you know. There are posters to be put up, newspaper ads to be arranged, casual labour to be hired, and so on. Mm. When will the circus actually arrive? In the next hour or so. The first truck should be arriving any time now, and then the hard work really begins. Most people love the circus, don't they? But not many realise how much work there is, do they? That's right. We'll be working all day and half the night. It's a bit like moving a small army. But, fingers crossed, by tomorrow morning everything will have been set up in time for the afternoon performance. Oh, there's the Grand Parade through the town centre at 11.30, so don't forget to come and see us. Thank you, Sally, for coming in to talk to us. Now, don't forget, folks, the Grand Circus Parade will start from the pier at 11.30... Go along the promenade, through the gardens, and finish in Jubilee Park. Farnham Circus will be in town for two weeks, until the 28th of August. Now for some music. Unit 72. Getting things done. Tim, that bathroom tap's still dripping. It's getting on my nerves. I thought you said you were going to fix it. Oh, yes. The washer needs replacing. Why don't you replace it, then? It's not as easy as that. I'll try and do it next week. But you said that last week. I know. I think you'd better phone for a plumber and get it done. I'm not really quite sure how to do it. Adrian and Susanna are going on a touring holiday of France next week. They're taking their own car. Adrian always gives Susanna a lift to work. He's dropping her off outside her office. Oh, Susanna. I won't be able to pick you up from work tonight. 
I'm having the car serviced. I thought we'd better have it done before we go. Oh, that's all right. When are you collecting it? Uh, not till quarter to six. Why? Well, I want to have my hair done before the holiday. I'll try and make an appointment to get it done after work. Then you can pick me up from the hairdressers. Okay. Can you ring me at work and let me know what time? Right. I'll call you later. Bye. Oh, I'm afraid it's been rather neglected. The present owner is in his 80s. He's just gone into an old people's home. Yes. It looks as though a lot needs doing to it. That's true, but the price is very reasonable. It would be ideal for a do-it-yourself man. Hmm. I'm not very good with my hands, I'm afraid. We'd have to get most things done for us, wouldn't we, Jean? Oh, I don't know. Could we see inside? Of course. I'll show you the kitchen first. Oh, dear. Just look at that sink. It must have been there since the house was built. It's a nice large room, though, and there's plenty of light. We'd have to have kitchen units put in, and we'd need to get it tiled. But you could do the ceiling yourself, couldn't you? And the painting. Is that the only power point there? I'm afraid so. It looks pretty old. I'm sure the whole place would need rewiring. Mm. We certainly couldn't do that ourselves, and we'd need to have more points put in at the same time. Would you like to see the lounge? It's through here. Oh, my God. It'd certainly need redecorating. I suppose we could do the painting and wallpapering. What's it like upstairs? They're pretty bad, really. It obviously hasn't been decorated for years. And as I told you on the phone, it hasn't got a bathroom. But you could have the small bedroom converted into a bathroom and get a grant towards the cost. All the other houses in the street have had that done. What about the toilet? I'm afraid that's outside, but you could get one put in the new bathroom. And, of course, you get a grant for that as well. Is there anything else that needs doing? Well, you'd probably have to get the roof repaired pretty soon. The sooner the better, if you ask me. It looks as though water's been coming in over there. And, of course, we'd want to have central heating put in, and the windows double-glazed. It's a very noisy street. I couldn't do any of that myself. Of course not. Uh, anyway, thank you for showing us around. But really, I think the best thing would be to knock it down and start all over again. Unit 74. Don't panic. Don't forget to fasten your seat belts. Please do not leave your seat while the warning light is on. May we remind passengers to read the emergency procedures. Please do not smoke in the aisles or in the toilets. Would you like to see the flight deck? I'm busy now, but I'll bring you a drink in a minute. I'm afraid I can't give you another drink, sir. Here's the headset. Let me help you. Please keep your belts fastened. We're going through turbulence. Remove your shoes and proceed at once to the emergency exits. Come on, dear. You can make it. Just slide down the chute. I'll have to push you. Unit 75. Messages. Amanda Haywood is a secretary at Standard Security Systems. Her boss, Peter Dawson, was away on business on Monday. She took several messages for him. Listen to the conversations and look at the notes. Nine o'clock. Mr. Dawson's office. Oh, it's Jenny. Can you give Mr. Dawson a message? I won't be in till Friday. I've got flu. I saw the doctor this morning. Okay, Jenny. I'll pass the message on. I hope you feel better soon. Nine forty. Mr. Dawson's office. Can I help you? May I speak to Mr. Dawson, please? I'm afraid he's away on business. He'll be back tomorrow. Can I take a message? Please. It's Tom Watkins here. Look, I can't make the meeting on Tuesday afternoon. Something important's come up. I'll ring Peter on Wednesday. 
11.30. Hello, Godfrey. What can I do for you? Mr. Dawson isn't here, is he? No, not till tomorrow. Ah, oh, it's just that I want Friday off. You see, my grandmother died yesterday. I'll have to go to the funeral. Oh, I am sorry. How old was she? Ninety-two. 12.15. Mr. Dawson's office. Can you put me through to Mr. Dawson? I'm afraid he isn't here today. Would you like to leave a message? Oh, right. Wadley's garage, here. Yeah? It's about his new car. It isn't ready yet. There's a strike at the factory today. 2.10. Good afternoon. Mr. Dawson's office. Good afternoon. This is Juliet Dobson from Western Video Systems. Mr. Dawson's at the trade fair in Lyon, isn't he? Yes, that's right. He should be here tomorrow. Well, can you give him this message first thing in the morning? I'm afraid we must cancel our last order. The customers have changed their minds again. 3.20. Good afternoon. Mr. Dawson's office. Hello, this is Miguel Gonzalez speaking. Is Peter there? No, I'm afraid he's away on business today. Can I pass on a message, Senor Gonzalez? Yes. I may be in London from the 21st to the 25th. I want to see Peter then, if possible. It's about the agency in Mexico. 4.35. Mr. Dawson's office. Uh, my name's Samantha Ellis. Can you get Mr. Dawson to phone me as soon as he gets back from Lyon? It really is very urgent. 4.55. Mr. Dawson's office. Ah, Miss Hayward. This is Charles Berry. Oh, good afternoon, sir. I've got an important message for Mr. Dawson. Give it to him the minute he comes in. Just say, don't supply Mason and Company until further notice. I'll explain later. It's Tuesday morning. Peter Dawson has just returned to the office after his business trip to Lyon. Look at the notes and listen to her report. Good morning, Amanda. Could you come in for a minute, please? Good morning, Mr. Dawson. Did you have a good trip? Yes, thank you. Were there any messages for me yesterday? Yes, quite a few. Shall I just run through them? Please. Jenny phoned. She said she wouldn't be in till Friday. Oh. Why is that? She said she had flu. She'd seen the doctor. Right. Go on. Then Mr. Watkins called. He said he couldn't make the meeting this afternoon, but would ring you on Wednesday. Okay. Godfrey came in looking for you. He said he wanted Friday off. Did he? Yes. He told me his grandmother had died and he'd have to go to the funeral. Oh, dear. I'd better see him later. And Wadley's garage called. They said your new car wasn't ready. Oh, no. Why on earth not? They said there was a strike at the factory yesterday. Again? After lunch, Miss Dobson phoned. She said that Western Video Systems had to cancel their last order because their customers had changed their minds. Pity. Mr. Gonzalez called from Mexico to say he might be in London from the 21st uh, to the 25th. He said he wanted to see you then. Oh, good. I hope he can make it. And then a lady phoned, Samantha Ellis. She asked you to phone her as soon as possible. She said it was urgent. Ah, Samantha. I wonder what she wants. Oh, and just before five, Mr. Berry phoned. He told us not to supply Mason and Co. until further notice. He said it was important and that he would explain later. Anything else? No, that's it. Coffee? Please, that would be nice. Unit 76. A few questions. Who's there? The police. Open up. Uh, hold on a minute. I'm in the bathroom. Come on, open up. Oh, Sergeant Grimes. What can I do for you? Is this a social call? Very funny, Harry. I've got a few questions to ask you. Can I come in for a minute? Have you got a search warrant? No. Why? Do I need one? Have you got anything to hide then, Harry? No, no, nothing at all. Come in. Questions, you said. Well, fire away. Just a routine check, Harry, that's all. Just a routine check. Were you in a Mile End Road last night? No. Um, have you been there recently? No, no, I haven't. Why? Has there been any trouble? I think I'll ask the questions, Harry. Where were you last night? I was in the pub. Pig and whistle. Did anybody see you? Oh, yes. I've got plenty of witnesses. Witnesses, Harry? You haven't been accused of anything. Yet. 
Why do you need witnesses? I don't, Sergeant. I don't. Uh, I was with uh, some of my mates. I didn't know you had any, Harry. Who were they? Ah, uh, let me think. Tommy Ferret, Albert Bloggs, and, uh... What? Albert the Boot Bloggs? I thought he was still inside. No, they let him out last week. He got two years remission for good behaviour. Oh, yes. Sid Parker was there, too. What time did you get there? And what time did you leave? I suppose I got there about seven and left at closing time. Did you come straight home? Yeah. How did you get here? Did you drive? Oh, no. I'd had a few drinks. I'd never drive under the influence of alcohol, Mr Grimes. You know me. Think before you drink, before you drive. That's what I always say. Very good, Harry. Very good. By the way, is that your car outside, the red Granada? That's right. I've got all the papers. I can prove it's mine. Nice car. Especially as you're out of work. Oh, yeah. Well, my grandmother died. Left me some money. I see. Don't mind my asking, do you? Not at all. I mean, it's your job, isn't it? Well, how did you get that dent in the front wing, then? Oh, it happened in a car park. I wasn't there. Someone must have run into it. Fair enough, Harry. Well, I'll be seeing you. That's all for now. Tommy, yeah. Tommy, listen. It's me, Harry. The police have just been round. It was Grimes again. I don't think he knows anything, but he asked a lot of questions. Uh, I told him I was with you. Bloody hell, Harry. Did you have to mention me? I'm sorry, Tommy. Really, I am. Look, we'd better check the details in case they come to see you. What do you mean, in case they come to see me? If I know Grimes, he'll be here any minute. Come on, Harry, tell me exactly what he asked you and what you told him. Unit 77. Trust the heart. Melinda stood at the end of the garden, watching the sun begin to set behind the orchard into the sea beyond. She stood as she had done so many times, thinking of that last quarrel two weeks before. She remembered how Damien had at first denied the affair with Tamsin. But then, when she had forced him to admit it, how he had apologized and begged her for forgiveness. She sobbed a little as she thought of her harsh words, and how Damien, the only man she had ever really loved, had broken down and cried like a baby when she had refused to see him again. That was two weeks ago, and she had heard nothing from him since. She had tried to telephone. She wanted to admit that she had been unjust to tell him how much she regretted calling him a liar. She wanted to explain that she hadn't meant to hurt him. Suddenly the noise of the garden gate opening startled her. She turned and through the gloom she thought she could make out the familiar figure of Damien. Was it him? Could it possibly be? The approaching figure stepped into the last patch of sunlight and the last rays of the setting sun illuminated his long, dark, curly hair. He stopped, unsure of himself. Oh, Damien, she called softly. Damien, is it really you? Melinda, he murmured. My Melinda. She sighed deeply and ran to greet him. She took his hands tightly in hers. My darling, she whispered, can you ever forgive me? We must never speak of it again, he replied. But Damien, I never meant... He interrupted her. It's all right. I know that now. My darling, promise me something. Anything, she cried. Here, this is for you. Please... Please accept it and wear it forever. He drew a small leather box from his pocket and leaned forward to give it to her. Suddenly the box fell from his grasp. He bent to pick it up and at that moment his glasses slipped from his nose. Blast. Now where have they gone? I can't see a thing without them, he explained. Melinda went to help him. There was a crunch as his foot crushed the glasses into the gravel path. Oh, no. Now I've trodden on them, he exclaimed. 
Why can't I do anything right? Why do I always ruin everything? The laughter pealed round the garden. Oh, Damien, you silly boy. That's why I love you so much. Unit 78. Weddings. Adrian and Caroline were married recently. Our wedding was a pretty typical one, really. Caroline and I met about three years ago, and we got engaged last summer. We both wanted the traditional wedding. I suppose it's expensive, and some people say it's a waste of money, but it is a day to remember all your life. Anyway, we wanted to please our parents, and we both wanted to get married in church. Caroline's father hired a white Rolls Royce to bring her to the church. We wanted the whole wax, you know, top hat, tails, champagne, the full treatment. <laughs> the men rented their morning suits for the day. Caroline had three bridesmaids, her sister and two of her cousins, and a page. The page was her nephew. He was only three, and he made a lot of noise during the ceremony. I didn't feel my best that day because my stag party went on until five o'clock in the morning. I do remember the f f f photographs, though. We seemed to be waiting around for ages. Although it was very sunny Saturday, it was in May, there was a pretty cold wind. The reception was at the Carlton Hotel. It must have cost Caroline's dad a packet. The speeches went on a bit too long, I think. And of course, some of them were a bit vulgar, but I suppose that's a tradition. It took 20 minutes just to read out all the telegrams. I'd been very careful, and I'd parked my car around the corner. But of course, they somehow managed to find out where it was. You should have seen what they'd done to it. It was covered with lipstick, and they'd tied cans to the bumper. But anyway, they didn't find out where we were having a honeymoon. We went to Scotland. Stuart and Anne were married in a registry office. Stuart and I met last year. We were both working in Birmingham... Although Stuart comes from Leeds and I'm from London, we didn't want an elaborate wedding and neither of us are particularly religious, so we got married in the registry office. Another thing is that neither of our families are very well off and it seems silly to go to all the expense when you need the money to set up a new home. We just invited our parents and a couple of friends who were witnesses. It was all very simple. We didn't have a reception or anything. We just had a few drinks round at our place. We didn't even bother with a cake. We didn't have a honeymoon because Stuart's just started his own business and we couldn't afford the time. Unit 80. Departures. Gina has been studying English at a language school in England. Her course finishes at the end of this week and she's returning home on Saturday. She's in a travel agency now. Take a seat, please. I'll be with you in a minute. Yes, what can I do for you? I want to fly to Rome. Are there any seats available on Saturday? Just a moment and I'll check. Rome. Uh, what time of day are you thinking of going? Well, I'd rather not arrive too late. Uh, how about late morning or early afternoon? Mm. The 1210's fully booked, I'm afraid. There are seats available on the 1455 or the 1630. Is that too late for you? The 1455 sounds okay. What time does that get in? 1815, local time. There's a one-hour time difference, you know. Okay, that'll be fine. I'll pay cash, but I'll have to go to the bank and come back. That's all right. I'll hold the reservation for you. Streamline taxis. I'd like to book a taxi for Saturday morning, please. Where are you going? A London Airport, Heathrow. There'll be three of us sharing. How much will it be? Thirty-five pounds. Thirty-five pounds? Each? Or between us? Oh, that's all together. Uh, what time do you want to leave? The check-in time is five to two, but I, I don't know how long it takes to get there. Well, we'd better pick you up about half eleven in case we hit traffic. Can I have your name and address? Yes. It's Gina Castelli, two L's, 32 Seaport Road. 32 Seaport Road. Okay. 11.30 Saturday morning. Thank you. 
Come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Jenkins. Hello, Gina. What can I do for you? I've just come to say goodbye. Oh, yes, of course. You're leaving, aren't you? When? I'm flying tomorrow morning. I'm back at work on a Monday morning. Well, I must say, Gina, we'll be sorry to lose you. I don't really want to go, but... Well, I just wanted to thank you and all the other teachers. Oh, that's all right, Gina. I've really learned a lot. I hope to come back next year for a holiday. Don't forget to send us a card. And if you do come back, call in and see us. No, I won't forget. Well, there's the bell. Goodbye, then, and have a safe journey. Goodbye, and thanks for everything. Jacques! I'm glad I haven't missed you. Hello, Gina. When are you leaving? Tomorrow morning. I don't suppose I'll see you again. So, goodbye. It was nice meeting you. And you. <laughs> but you will keep in touch, won't you? Yes, I will. You've got my address, haven't you? Yes, and remember, if you're ever in Cherbourg, give me a call. <laughs> I'd be so pleased to see you again. Oh, I will. You can be sure of that. And you must do the same if you're ever in Rome. <laughs> well, <laughs> goodbye then. Goodbye. And look after yourself. Gina, the taxi's outside. Are you ready? Have you got everything? Yes, thank you, Mrs. Jarples. And thank you again. Oh, thank you, Gina, for the flowers. Now, don't forget to phone us when you get home, just to let us know that you've arrived safely. No, I won't forget. I don't know whether I'll be able to phone tonight or not, but in any case, I'll ring you in the morning, whatever happens. Well, goodbye then, dear. You'd better not keep the taxi waiting. Have a nice trip. Bye-bye. Bye. And look after yourselves. And thank Mr. Sharples for me. <laughs> <laughs> 